meeting, regular session, for Monday, October 16th at 7 p.m. We'll call the meeting to order. And at this time, we will uh, have the invocation and pledge of allegiance to the flag, which you are cordially invited to join us if you so choose. At this time, we'll have the invocation, which will be the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first item on our agenda tonight is the approval of the minutes for the work session which was held on September 18th. Do I have a motion to accept these minutes as written? Motion to accept. I have, I have, have some discussion. Oh, certainly. I noticed that I was missing from the work session, but I was actually present, unless I'm <laughs> missing it. Okay, I think we need to correct that. Oh, okay. I see. He, he said he was missing from the work session on the oh. list of the uh, present members. I got you. All right, so with that corrected, was there any other, anything else that anyone needs to correct before we take a, we'll, with that correction, then uh, Heather's made a motion with that correction. Is that okay, Heather? That is fine, thank you. All right, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Have the vote. All right. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Commissioner Griebel. Aye. Commissioner Salek. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Schott. Aye. Commissioner Hirsch. Aye. Uh, Chairwoman Shriver. Aye. Uh, the minutes pass. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. um, Included on top of your uh, packet was uh, three documents. One of them is uh, corrected minutes for uh, the regular session. Um, okay. It's one right here. small change uh, under the membership. We had to switch who was actually the acting chair for last meeting, but mm -hmm. that's the, the mm -hmm. only correction that was made. But you have those corrected uh, minutes in front of you. Okay. We have a correction in front of us for this for the all right we're moving to the regular session now which was also held on september 18 2023 with note of the correction by thomas do we have any other corrections that are necessary Where is this at? yeah no. oh, right. Right. i'm not with you that's it okay an Pete, we had a, there's a uh, there's an additional sheet that was put that was printed that's oh, all. yeah. Thank you. Um, this is for the regular session. I have the regular session, yeah. What I don't have is a work session. The, the, only, the only change was in the original that we had uh, Vice Chairwoman Schott listed as the acting chair, but that okay. meeting, Chairman Tri Chairwoman Driver was the acting chair. Right. So that was the correction we made. Okay. all on board with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have a have a motion to accept these with the correction? I make a motion to accept them with the corrected. Second. Aye. We'll second. Aye. All right, so we're ready to vote on those. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Commissioner Griebel. Aye. Commissioner Stalick. Aye. Commissioner Schott. Aye. Commissioner Hurt. Aye. Chairman Shriver. Aye. Minutes pass. Thank you. All right, we'll move to the audience for visitors. The audience for visitors is um, where you have the ability to come to the podium and speak about anything other than the public hearing. 
at the audience for visitors, we ask that you don't speak on the public hearing because we have an audience for visitors for the public hearing specifically. This is for matters other than the public hearing. So if anyone would like to speak to the planning commission about something other than the public hearing item, this is the time to do so. So if we don't have anyone that wishes to speak, We'll close the audience for visitors and we will move on to the public hearing item tonight, which is a request for a conditional use permit by Charles A. Counts, owner, and Brianna Russo, applicant, for the operation of an automobile repair garage slash tow yard at 611 Yorktown Road, tax map parcel 17-01-00-0023. Approximately 0.7021 acres, zoned RS single family residence. Who will be making that presentation tonight? Thomas? Thomas will give us some particulars. Thank you, Madam Chair. The application uh, is just how you read, uh, applicant and the request. The city code consideration, of course, is that. Uh, automobile repair garages and tow yards are, are not a permitted use uh, in any zoning district in the city. Um, it is listed uh, in the B2, but, but requires a, a CUP as well. This uh, was legally uh, advertised for and adjacent property owners uh, were notified. Um, important to note that adjacent property owners in both uh, the city and York County were notified. Uh, the request is to operate an auto automobile uh, repair garage and tow yard at the subject uh, parcel. The applicant currently owns and operates Guardian Auto Towing at 608 Wyth Creek Road. I'm sure you're all familiar with it, uh, formerly Champs. Uh, they envision using the new site to expand operations to a new building uh, to better facilitate larger uh, repair jobs. The applicant has expressed that at no time would more than eight employees uh, be on site and only three or four cars per day would be repaired at the new location. This is uh, the proposed site. Um, I do have the GIS pulled up um, actually in a different browser if it would be easier for you all to see, but uh, generally it's it's if you turn right um, onto Yorktown Road at, at the intersection at Carey's Chapel, uh, that, that's where we're looking at. Um, and it is what uh, we've referred to as uh, the last parcel in the city really on, on that side. Um, it, it's neighbored by uh, two Pocosin parcels, uh, I'll say to its northeast. Um, the parcel to its south, 201 East Yorktown is a York County parcel as is 1200 Victory Boulevard, and uh, everything directly adjacent, directly across the street, um, is also York County. This is um, a, a survey that was done of the property. I understand it may be a little uh, hard to see in, in this form, but, but you do have it in front of you. Um, basically, it, it shows it how the site, it's a, a current site survey, a physical survey of, of what is there. Um, I can come back to this and discuss it uh, in, in more detail if you all desire. This is a picture of the site that I took from Yorktown Road. This is looking into um, what is an old gravel driveway to the site on the left and then of the right um, is the tree line between this property and the adjacent property uh, which is in the city. This is looking at the site, um, I'll say from Yorktown Road, uh, direct, directly uh, in front of it and a little bit past the, the entrance. Uh, I did, I was able to gain access uh, to the site after a conversation with the, the property owner which allowed me to do so. Uh, this is the building and, and structure that currently exists. We are recommending uh, nine conditions uh, for this application. And in my memo, I, I'm a little more detailed, of, of course. Um, I'm sure you all had a chance to read it. 
Uh, but that, at this site, a, a mechanic shop did, did operate um, at one time, um, and according to the applicant from uh, 1970 to 2003, they, they stopped work there uh, just after Hurricane Isabel, I believe. Um, but it's the intent of the applicant, uh, as I mentioned in the memo, uh, to really facilitate more room and expand their operation, which currently exists in the city, uh, for jobs that, that their current building really doesn't accommodate. Um, they do have a towing component uh, to their business, and you know, we understand would be towing some cars in and out of this lot, but uh, you know, to preserve the residential character uh, of, of, of that part of, of the city and, and also York County, we've recommended the following conditions. Uh, the plans for the site shall only approved, be approved once all requirements of the city code are satisfied. The hours of operation are to be from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and no outdoor activity is permitted between the hours of 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Repair work shall be performed within the building only. An operable vehicle shall be stored inside of or in the rear of the building and screened from public view. Screening shall be maintained along each property line as required in city code section 10-8 of the B2 district regulations. These are the screening uh, requirements that we see when we um, permit uh, storage yards. Uh, you know, a combination of, of man-made or natural materials may be used and so forth. Uh, signage is to be permitted in accordance uh, with Appendix D, signs of the city code. And then the three that we always see, the use must comply with all local, state, federal permits, license, and regulations. Uh, if at any time the specific use is discontinued for a period of more of two or more years, the permit shall become null and void, and that city council reserves the right to review and amend the conditions of the permit as they see fit. Uh, I don't want to uh, speculate on, on the operation uh, specifically. I am certainly uh, not a certified mechanic. I would lose that job fast. Uh, but specific to the application, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Right now for Thomas, or did you want to wait until after the public? I'm going to wait until after the hearing. Yeah. Okay. I, I do see uh, the applicant. Um, and I, I do want to mention, uh, I sent you all today communications from two adjacent property owners, uh, York County property owners. Uh, you, I gave you a hard copy of that communication as well. Um, and, and with the application in the packet, you will see the letters that um, we requested from the applicant from the three, from the two adjacent and third, um, I'll say nearest property owner on the city uh, that they were amenable and, uh, and agreeable to the use. Okay. All right, at this point, we will now open the public hearing on this. And if anyone wishes to come to the podium and address the Planning Commission regarding this uh, application, now is the time to do it. And if you would, please be sure and give your name and address uh, when you come to the podium and speak into the microphone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Creason. I live at 218 East Yorktown Road, uh, directly across from where this is at. Um, this place you're talking about is surrounded by residential housing. Turn are talking about putting a business right in the middle of a residential. It's the rated RS zone on, on the part of the side of the coastal side. Thank you. 
you. Anyone else wish to come? Mm-hmm. That was indicated to us by the owner, of course, yes. So if that's the case, I'm sure people moved in there before then when it was still commercial. So now all of a sudden it got turned to residential. It's an issue. So when it was commercial to begin with, people still moved and bought and built things over there. But now that it got turned to residential, it almost go back to commercial. That's an issue. But I just want y'all to know it's not going to get stored up. We're going to have to be vehicles. But we will not be bringing cars in and out there day in and day out. We're not responsible for people running over telephone poles, taking on mailboxes that don't do I got a question. Uh, the access to your facility, does it start off of Yorktown Road in York County to, to reach your lot? Uh, I believe that part is part of the So there's no actually paved, it's just a, uh, a gravel or dirt road? So it's a gravel lane? Could you flip back to the pictures that you took earlier? I have a question um, for Mr. Russo while, while, he's, while he's up here, if I can find my way. So um, the photo on the left, I kind of see those two blocks in the middle of the grass. I drove by it earlier tonight. Is that the access road? Yes, it's especially gravel, but over here, so it's coming off, if you're coming out of the city, it's going to be that right-hand turn. Yeah, right. Okay. And then also, to let y'all know that no vegetation will be taken down. Our plan is to keep the work vegetation as we can on the property line. Up, oh, that shelf remains in for a fencing line. All of these are there. There's a lot of noise and noise and everything else and seeing what's going on. Help out with all that stuff. And we do have a shop right on the street where everybody knows where it's at. And the two houses right behind. And just to confirm, so there will there will be no towing of vehicles after business hours to that lot. So it's not going to interrupt residents no. after the whatever the time frame was no, on there. Thank 
questions, if you don't mind. Um, so your activity, your hours of operation are 8 to 7 p.m. Um, that's listed in the application here that's submitted to us. I went through all of the other uh, auto parts uh, locations today, McPherson's, because in your other shop at Wick Creek Road, Freddy's, they all operate from 8 to 5. Yeah, they just put the 7 in there. Would be, it, 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 sometimes if you're finishing up a job, let's say, Are you, are you planning on overnight work there? Because that's so in the applicant, you know, with if you're working inside of the building, you know, and you've got torque wrenches and things going off, if you're working on vehicles, you know, with the adjacent property owners, I'm just making sure that that will take. Okay. Uh, what are you, Madam, going, to, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, uh, what are you going to be doing uh, to the existing structure, if anything, or is that where you plan to work? No, we plan on knocking that over, cleaning up the inside of the property line, putting up the building inside How many square feet would it be? Approximately the same size, or? Uh, concrete wall, uh, is that going to be removed as well? Yes, sir. I have a question too. Uh, I understand that you have some affiliation with the race with the race cars, or um, I have seen that on Facebook. But it raised a question in my mind that I know how loud those cars are because they have no mufflers, and so my concern is working on those kinds of vehicles in that shop the noise that would be created during that period of time by working on those types of vehicles. Is that primarily what is this is set up for? You don't work on race cars? Okay, good. Glad to know that. Mm. Well, that's not a very big shop there to be working on those kinds of, well, I wouldn't think. Pretty tight quarters there. It is, but we need to work. <laughs> um, can I ask about, um, I was looking at the hours of operations from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and no outdoor activities permitted between the hours of 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, wouldn't the outdoor activity mirror the closing time of 7 p.m.? I think that, I think that was put in there to say pretty much no coming in and out of the property between that time. Okay. See what I'm saying? One other question I have, do you have, the, if you're finished, um, just looking at the plat and, and the way the entrance is into the property, um, I was just curious to know how you, that will be um, redesigned to be able to make a right-hand turn coming out of your property. So you're saying you'd never be making a right-hand turn out of that property? No, never. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I know, I, I know the property well, and I know it's, it would be very difficult to make a right answer. Inoperable vehicles. How long are inoperable vehicles going to be there? Well, I mean, it is a, it would be a repair shop, so you have to think inoperable. Car needs a motor. It might take a month to get a motor for the So what are you supposed to do? Tell the customer, but it's not going to be like a junkyard. Uh, yes. All right. So you know how much cleaning up and stuff we did out there when we took over that place. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in having a bunch of junk in there. This was disgusting. So yeah, but we're going to make that. 
So uh, let me ask you, are you going to be operating uh, Monday through Sunday? No. What are your, what are your days? Monday through Friday. No Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. Uh-uh, it's not in here, and I wanted to know. Because the weekends, I would and think, would be... Okay. Would you would you be opposed to to doing a little? I'm just throwing this out to you. Where you got eight to seven, since the other places are eight to five. I'm just wondering if you'd be willing to do. Uh, I mean, seven to five. I'm wondering where seven to five and eight to five. Would you compromise maybe with a five, uh, eight to six? So one of my concerns is, while that's all good, is the residential neighborhood that is that homes are around us. I, I'm familiar. I live on Little Florida, so I I understand. But I was just thinking that most people, the hours, you know, they would be away from home, mm -hmm. would be, you know, and that's why. And it, it, it's seven o'clock. Most everybody is at home, even at six, they're at home. I, I would say six would be kind of stretching it, but I just wanted to know if you might possibly. Compromise where well I know uh, I know McPherson's closes at five, and y'all close uh, and y'all close at five. Your other place. You're basically right across, really, from Freddie's uh, garage, which. <laughs> A little bit back from it. Yeah, you're close enough though. Up yeah. Back. If I could throw a baseball any better than I do now, I could probably hit it. Well, you can see Freddy's is almost yeah, in the corner where close. this one yeah. is. It's, it's quite a bit of it's And that's the same type of a place, right? They're in New York County, huh? aren't they? Correct. Yes. New York. Mm -hmm. Well, even some of that road, I think, is in New York County. It is. Well, and it was granted. Actually, uh, I read a letter from the attorney's office saying that it's the, the access to that facility has been agreed to in, in a previous letter, if I'm not mistaken. It was ordered by the circuit court. The ordered by the circuit court. Confirmed that there's an easement of ingress and egress. Which I believe is shared with this gentleman. Is that correct? No, no. With the house of this letter. Yeah. It's directly across from that. It's a tenth of a mile from Freddy's to my house. It's 500 feet. Okay. Um, you can't see Freddy's all the right. Y'all's comments can't be heard. Since, that's all right, and, and we, you're welcome to come to the podium again in a few minutes, but the audience at home can hear your response. So, um, okay, are there any further questions for Mr. Russo? Yes, Mr. Russo, I was looking at the um, packet that you submitted that about your future, and it says the shop will be able to accommodate larger vehicles, including service vehicles, motor coach, buses, hauling trailers, and boat trailers. Um, it's a little bit different bringing in a truck or or a car when you're looking at like a motor coach, like you ride a coach down the street. Can you just talk a little bit more about is that going to be, is that steady part of what you anticipate? No, and I don't, some of that stuff was just added in. I don't know if it's going to be more than one of those. There's half of the diesel engines. I don't know if it's going to be diesel engines. Um, and it's just going to be the Well, okay. I think I'm looking at you 
there's a big difference when you have a giant motor coach yeah, driving right. down the street. See, they, they do free when you set these packets up and doing these different things for mining things and trying to get better weapons and things like that. We do do, we do, do boat repairs, trailer repairs, and trailer repairs, and they're actually carriers and stuff like that, and sprinters. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, so, is the boat repair business still going on? Yeah, it's still going on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that was us and two other people that own the parts. And we are fine with it to give it two counts because if not, he couldn't sell the property. And there's no reason to not let him sell that property. I don't see a difference in what's been there for all these years and them going in there and creating business to help the COSIN. I just don't understand the difference. I don't think they will, I know they will not be towing cars in and out. Like they said, I believe them. So to me, being the closest, we're okay with it. Our neighbors behind us are okay with it. All of us have sent the papers saying that it was ourselves, Mr. Hood behind me, and the Hopsons that are at the end of, Hopkins that are at the end of the lane. And all of us were okay with it. And we're all the cosin. So that's pretty much what I have to say. I think it'd be fine. I don't understand the whole property value because we own the lot next to it and the house next to it. So that's all our property. So it would really be affecting us more than anybody being right next door to it. So that's, oh, any questions? No? Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am, come up and give us your name and address. Good evening. Hi. I'm Carol Denise Hobson, mm -hmm. and um, I'm an adjacent neighbor an owner of 212 and 216 East Yorktown Road and other parcels of land directly across the street from 611 Yorktown Road. I also share a right of way according to Mr. Counts to 611 Yorktown Road. My homes and land all share a common driveway directly across the street from 611 Yorktown Road and this allows the only ingress and egress to East Yorktown Road, the distance from the end of the driveway to the opposite side of East Yorktown Road is 29 feet and narrows further into a bend and dip in the road. I also have some GIS aerial views that offer a better view than this one, if you're interested in seeing them. Thank you. Well, did you say you had that? on a separate window. I wish to point out, as everyone is aware, that Freddie's Body Shop is located 600 feet west of 611 Yorktown Road, where the road has been widened to accommodate four lanes of traffic. At that location, there are far fewer problems for such a business, first because there are no adjacent residential neighbors, and second because the road has been widened to accommodate four lanes of traffic. The Russo's current business location on a Wyth Creek Road is also situated on a wider road for easier access. Um, so my neighbor mentioned that um, because the road is so narrow, it goes into a curve and then into a bend. The, the width is 27 feet across. Um, there have been two accidents within the past six months and the most recent was the downing of a power line pole on the 28th of uh, September. So we're concerned about um, access and of course property values being diminished and spoiling the, the tranquility of our rural, re rural residential neighborhood. So um, I hope you received the letter that I sent today. Thank you. Sorry if this is being redundant. But um, yeah, we're, we're concerned about tow trucks coming in in the middle of the night. Um, Freddie's Body Shop, when I passed today, they did have tow trucks there, but they were next to um, Victory Boulevard. So where they're loading and unloading cars with their tow trucks, it's right in the middle of a busy intersection. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
else? Yes, sir. So I, I keep on hearing about the uh, road not being wide enough and accidents and things like that. That's just people not knowing how to drive or paying attention. That really has nothing to do with the business going in there. And on top of the hearing about the tow trucks at Freddy's Body Shop, uh, and you said, I think they said we would be unloading in the middle of the road or in the middle of an intersection or something like that. No, we can drive the trucks onto the property and unload in there. We've been doing it long enough. We can fit in tight spots. Um, and that's about it. All right. Uh, the, uh, what are you talking about not towing in? What would be your recourse if he starts doing it in the middle of the night? We can complain, but what is it going to stop him from doing? Uh, he's going to spend all this money on a, buying the property, building a steel building, and then barely using it? That doesn't make any sense. Once it gets there, it's there, and he's going to use it whatever he wants to use it with. We have no recourse to stop him except to call and complain, and what good is that going to do? Um, it's, it's kind of disingenuous saying they're not going to do very much there. I expect it's going to be more b busier at this one than the one they actually have at Pocosin Avenue and with Creek because it's going to be much more room and they can do much more with it. Um, and like I said, all the businesses in Pocosin that are there now, all the gas station, they've been there forever. People had a, a choice to build beside them, just like the two houses directly behind their shop now in Pocosin. They, were, they knew it was going to be there when we built there. So they understood that, so they took that, that leap to, 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 to build beside it and live beside it. We don't have any choice. Like I said, we're saying we're just going to be, have to just live with it, and that just doesn't seem fair that, uh, that we're going to have to just put up with it regardless. If, like I said, who, what's our recourse if he doesn't do what he said he's supposed to do? Is there any recourse for us? I mean, complaining, and, and he will say he won't do it again, and then do it again, over and over again. Or to... Sure. Um, like, like any uh, conditional use permit, um, Madam Chair, uh, we always include the condition that City Council reserves the right to review and amend the conditions of the permit uh, as they see fit. Um, and that is not exclusive of revoking uh, uh, of the, the permit. So uh, with any conditional use permit, um, if if the the applicant uh the the permit holder uh was acting outside of those conditions um that was either observed by staff or um we received complaints uh we'd certainly follow up on it with the applicant um but then if if true um then uh we would obviously uh Re refer it to uh, council and probably make a recommendation that they, they do revoke it. it it's uh, in the seventh condition um, and that it ends uh, with the city council uh, may revoke the permit if the use is operating in violation of the regulation. So uh, that's why that's there. Uh, for, for bad actors, uh, if it was to arise that can revokes the permit. Another question is once they make it into a Y'all make it into a business. Y'all might throw him off of it, but somebody else can move right back into it somewhere else y'all give him it for. So once it becomes business, it, it stay that way. If he's talking about building a steel building to work out of, that building's going to be there. So it's going to be a commercial site forever. They have to, to seek a conditional there. use permit. If a conditional use permit was revoked, then the permit is revoked for the property someone else couldn't continue the use that for which a permit was revoked. Right. They'd have to seek a... They would have to apply for a subsequent apply. CUP. That's exactly right. Yeah. The, uh, the property would, it still remains RS. It's just that you've got a conditional use permit. Should that permit be rejected or reviewed or re revised, then it can go back to an RS. That, that, that's correct. Because it the, is. The underlying zoning is not being changed. It's not a rezoning application. It'll right. continue to be RS. Mm -hmm. um, and if at any time the, the permit is revoked or expires, uh, it's still RS. It'll always be RS, but you know, the nature of the conditional use permit is for uh, 
uses not otherwise permitted by right to operate in really any zoning district that they request. I hope that answers your question. Well, no, because once the metal building is built to work out of it, it's there. They're you tearing down the building it. this time. If you're going to make it into a house, you're not going to be working out of a metal building. Well, but you'd have to tear it down, and that would be a financial uh, uh, thing for somebody that has to tear a building out to build a house. So it'll stay a business forever. It'll never go back to being a residential. Once that building's there, that's it. It's going to be a res it's going to be a business forever. Because uh, a, a steel building is not a cheap building to put up, uh, and all the stuff you're going to need, it's going to have lifts. That means hydraulic lifts. All this stuff's got to be done. It's no longer going to be a residential neighborhood. It's going to be a business piece of property forever. It'll never go back. Um, and that's the thing. Once you do it, it's done, and it's done right in a residential area. Thank you. Uh -huh. So what is your address? What 218. My driveway is directly across from where that driveway is. And how long have you been at that property? Uh, coming up on 15 years. So you bought there after it was vacated then? It, it's that... been vacated for as long as I can remember. I'm, I'm from Bacosa. I just moved up there. That, bit, that spot is not being used in probably 20 years or more. There's nothing going on in there. It's just a, it's been an empty site for years. Um, it's, well, I, know it's it, I know that it's never had a home on it no, um, no. as long as I can remember, and I'm a native of Pocosa. Had a store up there, um, which a, trafficked a lot of people. Count but, yeah. store. Was yeah, but that was not there. That was further back. It was right there all along. Where no, it was on the other was. side of the dirt road where the Hopkins yeah. live. But it's That's the house I bought. I bought the original old Hopkins house built in 1939. That's so you were right next door to the store then? It, is that right next door to the store, 218? No, right across the street. Right across the street. Right across the street. Right across the street. Right it's 220 feet from my house to where this is going to be at. The, the lady that spoke earlier, she's much farther away than I am. I, I'm right across the street from it. My driveway, like I said, is right, right where their driveway is. Well, now the Clarks live right next door to, they live between the dirt road going back to the Hopkins and this parcel. You are further up and across the street, is that correct? I'm directly across the street from this 611. My house is 218. It's directly across almost. Like I said, my driveway. But then it, I'm looking at this map, it would appear to me that 212 is sort of. I map myself. Well, I, maybe I'm misreading this, but I see 218. I see 212 here. Yeah, yeah. Almost a Clark from maybe the Clark's property. Is that Yes, ma'am. There's a, there's a big open field before yeah. you get to their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's. Quite a bit ways to their, to their house. It's quite a ways over to, to their house when you get to their house. And then also, um, if you look on the, I guess it may show, and there's the the land right in front, a large part of right in front of this property is owned by somebody else, and there's nothing. To, and it's a it's ro zoned rural residential. He's That's two hundred one. Cut oh, those trees down. Well, the person that owns it, they can come down because they can build a house on it at some point. So then it's going to open it up. You're going to see right directly across at some point because if people are going to want to sell that piece of land, I think, for a while. If you see that in the red. Yeah, I, 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 I know park. the property. Yes, and that's in York County. The road is, if you look, the property line goes right down the middle of the road, then turns is what it does. I know the counts have had that property for sale for many years now as a residential site. Yeah. And to, to no avail have they sold. So I think that... That kind of speaks to the fact that people really aren't interested in a, in a, in a home there on that property. It, maybe because there's more desirable because at some point there's not going to be no desirable and then a house will get built on it. Um, that's my feeling. At some point it's going to be because they're going to run out of land in because to build houses on it. It's been um, a long time. Though. And so it will become at some point. Okay. Thomas, do you know, can you clarify that the York County property that's adjacent is that are those zone residential as well? The, all of them, um, well, 201 and 1200 are zoned rural residential. Um, I mentioned it um, in the memo, but it's it's basically um, York County's single family residential zone. Um, the minimum lot size is an acre, um, so it is really what it sounds like a rural residential How about where district. the Bayside is and the church is there? The church they're is right, they're right there it, close it, to it. That's right. That's it, it's uh, further up, but right. it's along on that end. It, it, it is and that yeah. church access is is really the first 
us and parcel on the other side of uh, of the road um, and then of course the rest of our residential district moves forward they generate a lot of traffic I, I, I was just reading this uh, part. Well, I guess we shouldn't be discussing yeah, too much I, okay. more, though, because it may be somebody else okay. who wishes to speak. We still have a public hearing, and we'll, we'll, when we close it, we'll discuss it even more. Anybody else? Talking about um, businesses being in the middle of um, the neighborhoods, there's a lawn company right past the church, KAB, and he is out of his house, and he has all his stuff in there. He's got all his trailers that go up and down in the morning at 6 o'clock, which goes by our house, which I can hear when my windows are open. I don't understand what the difference is. He has all his property, I mean, all his lawn stuff, and he works on it. He has all his trailers, and he works out, you know, he pulls them in and out. So I don't understand. He's out of his own house, but it... Thank you for bringing that point up. Is that a, under a conditional use permit for that? I do not believe so. And I don't know who they are. I don't know them. I just know when you drive by there, you can see it because it's right, right behind. Like if you go into Bayside and come around, you can see it from Bayside. And you can see it from the road. And he has, you know, a few big trailers. Like the trailer is probably sitting out there. When you took the picture, somebody had a trailer sitting there. Um, might be my lawn guy, I don't know. Um, but they have those and that's in the middle and it's not zone commercial at all. So how can that be okay and that not? And he's right next to houses. So that's just my question, my idea. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Okay, if not, we're going to close the public hearing discuss this planning commission can discuss it okay well I, I was just looking through the packet and you know looking at some of the verbiage that was provided um, under the executive summary um, the additional shop will allow our team to perform large jobs and store cars parts and tow the yeah, I thought this was not going to be a storage yard, but this, according to this verbiage here, says allows our team to perform larger jobs, store cars, parts, and tow vehicles, and then the pages over is where it spoke to buses and motor coaches under our future. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, I wonder if this business will eventually evolve into what they're saying right here. And, and I understand the folks that live across the street, and, and, and I, I mean, I understand that. I get that. Uh, I know that Mr. Counts operated that mechanic store for many, many years, and to my knowledge, there was never any complaints or anything like that, but of course, he was a smaller business. He wasn't a booming business. Uh, cars hauled in, hauled out, towed in, towed out. It wasn't that type of thing, but it's always been a mechanics and, and uh, Ms. Hobson, you live there. I'm sorry? Oh, oh, he had a dog there. <laughs> yeah, junkyard dog, I guess you'd call it, right? Um, but as, as far as I know, there was never any major objection to him operating that, that business because it was on a small scale. Uh, and of course, the, the, all of the. the um, trees and, and, and bushes and all of that has grown up around it, which is hiding it, if you will, even more. Um, so my concern is, is that this is going to be a major operation as opposed to a small town operation. And are we setting a precedence here, you know, by because it is on the outskirts of residential zoning, um, you know, saying, well, you know, because I know it hasn't, you know, it, it's been offered for sale as a residential lot and hasn't, it's been probably two to five years, maybe longer than that. Um, probably since Mr. Count soon after he left. But um, I, 
you know, I, I have mixed feelings about it. I understand as a resident how you, how you feel, and yet I know what was there, and I know if, if that same type of use were to continue, I don't think it would probably be objectionable to anybody. But if it becomes a major, major um, storage yard, maintenance facility, you know, I, I, I just can envision that it would become something larger. And I'm, I, I want to see Coast and have businesses because I think right. we need that um, for revenue, for the, the support of the city. But at the same time, I think that if it were limited, maybe if we were to put restrictions stronger than what you have on it, so that it did not become a major uh, property. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, I have mixed emotions. So I'm just kind of speaking out loud, talking out loud. Well, I think the reason you have that is because you've gotten two different stories. In the presentation here, the executive summary is a different story than Russo has told that us tonight. So the confusion comes with we're seeing here uh, mentions of towing vehicles and he says he is not going to be he's going to tow them there and drop them off I, I, I'm, I'm kind of confused too by it because I've kind of gotten two different feelings about it if if it was I'm like Libby if it was purely for for going in there and and using it for a facility to be able to work on larger jobs, let's say. Let's use the term jobs. I don't know if that's correct or not, but I'm going to say it. Uh, I think that very few people, a lot of people, don't even know right now that there's been anything back there. I'm like Libby. I never heard anything much about it. I spent some time myself up on Yorktown Road when I was a younger person. Uh, my cousin lived up there. and spent a lot of time going up and down the road on bicycles and so forth and going to count store and nobody ever had much complaint about it it was always kind of grown overlooking and you didn't really even notice it and right now nobody notices it hardly it's shielded because it's shielded vegetation. and it but i think the confusion is the presentation tonight the verbal presentations but the summary line up here, with the summary. it kind of doesn't line up with it. Now, I, I would be for, you know, I would be, I, I'm for businesses in Pocosin, coming to Pocosin, and there has been a business there for many years. It, it, that two, two, the store and this. And, uh, you know, and it essentially there's a large business up there, which is Bayside, that is a business operation that's a large business um, and then because you got a church which that's not necessarily a business i guess but it's still a fairly large operation but on that end of town but i'm i'm just a little bit confused as to what is actually going to go on there i know that it would be to mr russo's advantage and the applicants who are trying to get this thing going not to uh <laughs> If you want to stay there and operate it, I think it, it would be to your advantage if this did go through not to not to uh, violate the conditions because they could shut you down, particularly if a bunch of your neighbors start coming out and complaining about your uh, operation. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not so much worried about the traffic. I live on Pocosin Avenue at 921 Pocosin Avenue and just probably about a month ago, somebody ran off a straight road. We live on a racetrack. <laughs> it's a racetrack there. I've lived most of my life in very close proximity to it. The corner has always been bad. We've got school there uh, very close. And somebody ran off and went down on the, in the culvert. I, I think they completely damaged their car to the point where it probably never ran again. But they got out of it and walked away, so I guess they were blessed in that respect. But I, I'm just a little bit confused. I, 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 I don't know what else to say. I feel like Libby. I have another question in that the applicant is Brianna Russo, and, and then further somewhere it says 
Mr. and Ms. Well, I guess, I don't know if it's Mr. and Mrs., but is there, do one of you own the company or do both of you own the company or how is your, because I see the applicant is Brianna Russo. So it's 100% female owned business. Okay, so you're really not an owner in the business. Is that correct? Okay. I, no, 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 no. I'm just trying to understand what I saw with the applicant was just you. Okay. Um, Heather, did you, uh, so my question is, is, is there a process for, I, I do feel like the packet that submitted the executive summary and um, right before or after, sorry, y'all. Um, the executive summary and then our future, I feel that that um, is some of the contradictive concerning for the residents in that area of exactly the, the, the times and what's going on and if that can be clarified. Uh, uh, I, Thomas has this. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm not going to speak for the applicant, um, but I'll talk you through a little bit of the process between myself and them and, you know, of course, preparing tonight's uh, application. That what you see from them is, is a, a business plan, more or less, for their operation as a whole as it exists on With Creek Road and, and may exist uh, at this new location. Um, of course, uh, you're writing a business plan for a private industry. We're going to be a Fortune 500 company before you know it. Um, I think it overshoots a, a, a bit of what the applicant has expressed they will be doing there, uh, which I, I explained um, in the staff memo. Um, they've indicated that their real desire is to, to use it as, as more of a satellite uh, location to their location on With Creek. and. And for, for jobs that require a little more wiggle room, they could go to the new site. Um, and and uh, they work on uh, postal service cars and, and things of that nature. Indicated that they wouldn't be working on more than three or four cars there a day, vehicles a day, um, I, I should, should clarify. Um, so I, I don't necessarily think that some of the, the things mentioned